Okay, this is our last lecture on ecology, and it's ecology and human impacts, climate change solutions. I wanted to leave you with something positive, because we talked about all these negative impacts in ecology of humans, and, and it's kind of depressing, but this, the picture is actually not depressing. So the biggest problem we faced is introduce greenhouse gases and climate change. It's a solvable problem. Okay. Um, so, again, I want to remind you, scientific consensus on climate. There is overwhelming evidence of rapid climate change. Dramatic increase in CO2 is the primary cause of this, and we know this is caused by fossil fuel burning. Okay, we know that there's further warning, and but the exact amount is inevitable. There's some uncertainty, but it's there's lots of evidence. What is that evidence? Well... There's changes in air temperatures, ocean temperature, pH, sea level, shrinking polar ice caps, shrinking glaciers, melting permafrost, uh, changes in soil temperature, and biological indicators. This is science. This is the what scientists want is multiple pieces of evidence all pointing in the same direction. This tells us we're on the right track. Okay, sounds terrible. Well. You know, human impacts, we can kind of, there, there are uh, ways to measure them and there's ways to talk about them. Uh, one way to talk about them is uh, an ecological, or sometimes they talk about a carbon footprint. This is just an estimate of the land and water needed to provide the materials and services that an average person requires. Okay, um, and this points out that human impacts depend upon population size and resource use patterns. Okay. So we just, to address climate change, we have to change resource use patterns. Sounds like an impossible task, but it's not. One of the barriers to doing this is, is just uncertainty and denial and fatalism. Denial and fatalism are psychological responses to difficult or uncomfortable situations. They're natural. Denial is natural. That's the first thing when there's something you don't like is to say, oh, it's not true. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, most people are going to move on and, and, and say, okay, there is a problem here, and how can I address it? But in the case of science denial, this is a tactic. Science denial is stoked by certain people, certain groups, to try and prevent change. Okay, um, This is a well-known tactic. It's been used by industries like the tobacco industry, the asbestos oh. industry, and others, chemical industries, and what they're trying to do is protect their financial interest. Okay, and so we know that that the um, the media uncertainty about climate change is being funded by various fossil fuel interests that are trying to protect their industry. They're trying to protect their investments and to continue to to make money. Okay, really. The first step to solving problems is to find and accept the best information. We have good scientific information, and then to research and develop options. Okay, this is not an unsolvable problem, and it's we faced many problems as large as this before. It's just, um, it's just part of new technologies. Okay, when we introduce new technologies, they are designed to solve old problems. Fossil fuel use made internal combustion engines, jet planes, uh, worldwide transport systems, home heating, power usage, that solved the problem. Okay, It was the energy source needed to industrialize the entire world, to modernize the entire world. Okay, That will have other side effects, though, that are difficult to predict, that may be disrupted. Okay, We all win by living in a modern world, but now we recognize that pollution is actually changing our atmosphere, okay? Um, this is not, you know, we can all kind of, on different scales, we can all see see kind of the effects of this, like with cell phones, okay? In my lifetime, okay, cell phones have replaced landlines, um, and it's infinitely better, okay? It's given millions of people access to phones, and they don't have to run to a pay phone. It's cheaper. You can make long distance calls. You used to have to pay an arm and a leg to make a long distance call. Um, we used to have telephone lines strung everywhere. 
It's more efficient. It uses less energy. But cell phones create new problems, okay? Just like other technologies have created new problems. We had to put towers everywhere. We have to dispose of our old phones when they become obsolete. And we have to deal with texting, okay? During my lectures, that's minor. But during driving, that's killing thousands of people each year. And so that's, it causes some side effects, okay? We know climate change is a large problem, okay? It developed slowly and it's kind of complex. Um, and there's not just one cause, there's a primary cause, that's fossil fuel use, but there's lots of causes. And we're gonna have to all work together and it's gonna take a while to fix this, okay? But I want you to know that just like cell phones, the solutions are going to solve the problem and make things better for everyone. One of the big, big things is that we have to do things in energy efficient ways. We can reduce fossil fuel use by adopting energy efficient uh, strategies. These often use safer materials, reduce carbon dioxide, reduce consumption, and every consumer will save money and enjoy better service. Okay, there's lots of examples of of ways we can do this, okay? Uh, one example here is lighting, okay? We're gonna switch from incandescence and compact fluorescence to LED lighting, okay? This will cost a little bit of money because you'll have to buy a, a more expensive bulb. However, this bulb uses way less energy, so the energy cost will be much, much lower, and these bulbs will last 10, 10 times longer or more than, than even the compact fluorescence. They're much cheaper in the long run. In fact, energy use is falling, even without government intervention or anything, partly just because lighting costs are falling. I put all LED lights in my house about five years ago. Okay, I haven't had to replace a bulb in about five years. I used to keep a stash of incandescent bulbs in the house all, at all times because I was replacing bulbs every month. Okay, Likewise, uh, renewable energy is, is a cheaper source of energy. It's cleaner and it's more dependable. The government doesn't need to mandate it. The utilities are doing it on their own. Okay, On the lower left there is a graph of the price of solar panels. They've come down more than a hundredfold in the last 40 years. Okay, and the blue on the other side is the number of new solar installations. Okay, they've gone up more than a hundredfold in the last 40 years. Okay, then on the uh, the right, the upper right, are uh, U.S. utility scale electric electric capacity additions and retirements. Okay, and what I want you to notice is look at 2002. Okay. The additions are all natural gas. Look at 2016, the majority of additions are wind and solar, okay? The US utilities are not dummies. They're trying to make money and they make money by adding solar and wind. And look what they're getting rid of. They're getting rid of coal and natural gas, okay? It's just cheaper to, to use renewables. Renewables don't require pipelines. They don't require mining. They don't require trucking or, or using a train to haul coal. They don't require giant scrubbers that have to be cleaned out. It's just way cheaper, okay? And so the profile of total energy generation in the United States is changing and it's becoming more and more towards renewables, okay? Another kind of thing that's going to happen is, is that we're gonna to go to electric cars. It might be hybrid electric, it might be battery electric, it might be fuel cell electric, but uh, it's we're gonna to go to electric cars, not necessarily because of reducing CO2 and emissions, but because they're better, okay? And those are two of my cars that are on the side. I have a, a little Ford electric, uh, and then I have a Honda Civic hybrid. That's actually my older one, I have a newer one. And these cars are so much better. Once you get them, you won't go back. Um, they're, they're, uh, my electric cars have great acceleration. They, they're unbelievable in, in the performance. They're quiet. They have much lower operating costs. They have much lower maintenance cost, okay? There are fewer moving parts. 
There's no engine heating up and cooling down. There's no exhaust system. There are fewer filters. Um, you know, there's there's no, it's, it's just better. I don't have to go to the gas station. I just plug it in. Um, it's, and, and ultimately these cars right now, they're more expensive, but ultimately they're gonna be cheaper because there are so few moving parts to make. Um, they're just less complicated. Um, and, and so they're gonna be better and we're gonna to go to them because they're better, not just because they're good for the environment, they're better for consumers. That's my next car on the, on the lower side there, that's the Cybertruck. Um, there are some, some, you know, some new problems with these, some, some differences. Um, they take a long time to recharge, but if they're doing it in the garage overnight, it's faster than going to the gas station. I just plug them in at night. Um, great performance, really cheap, longer lasting, unbelievably better. So in summary, okay, human impacts are the results of human population and resource use patterns. The most pressing human impact is climate change caused by fossil fuel use. Science denial and fatalism impair our ability to respond to climate change. Energy efficiency, renewable energy improvements can dramatically reduce fossil fuel use. Most people will benefit from changes that reduce fossil fuel use. They'll save money, things will be more reliable, and they'll actually work better. So, uh, you know, when you get out of, of college, it's likely that you'll get an electric or hybrid electric car like that Tesla in the driveway. And it's likely you'll have, a, like this house, you'll have a, a shingles on your roof that are producing electricity like this house does. All right, so it won't be the end of the world. It'll actually just be minor changes and things will get better.